Welcome back to the Alpine Rose. This is episode two of season three. In the last episode, we left off with the basement floor being poured. I wanted to first touch on the plans that were used for the building permit and to have the concrete poured. Being a do-it-yourselfer, I had to learn how to read the plans. I was supplied with three copies of large rolled up plans, approximately 18 pages. Very detailed, plus an engineered booklet of all the calculations that made the plans up. This page detailed the footer, the walls, and the concrete pad. There was also pages of more drawings that went into extreme detail on how thick the footer is, how thick the walls are, how thick each part should be. For example, this image shows the rebar for the concrete, the drain tube that's used to drain away from the house, the thickness and the width of the concrete, and you can see it's very detailed. With that said, let's move on. It's now May 2018. Thunder clouds out on the plains create all kinds of storms, but they create snowstorms in the Rockies. May 22nd was the scheduled date for the log delivery. I had to supply the forklift to unload the trucks. Also, because my road will not accommodate a tractor trailer, we had to come up with a plan on how to move the logs to the property. Here comes a truck. How exciting, Tracy. Oh, wow, look at the wet logs. We had approximately one hour to unload the truck, or we might get fined. The forklift I rented was actually quite easy to operate, but a little challenging. We had to get the logs and the lumber off the truck and then place it in a staging area so we could use another truck with a trailer to get it up to the property and unload it again. Yep. Depends how much of that is he going to grab. Oh shit. Sorry. Wait. Careful. Can I set it back down? It'll all go out. Back up. Wait, wait. Oh man, that looks cricket. Back. Once we got this first load off and eliminated the audience, actually things went pretty smoothly. 
with one minor exception. So one thing I learned here was to bring the boom a little closer to the lift. You'll see that on the next picture. This was actually the heaviest load that was on the truck. And because I didn't have the boom in when I started to lower it down, it tipped me. It actually went fairly slow. It felt like slow motion. And then all I had to do was uh, lower the boom to get the wheels back on the ground. There's always a little bit of a learning curve on any new piece of equipment that you rent. So once I got the hang of it, it was actually quite easy. Of course, now the weather was starting to change. We were getting a light rain and the temperature was starting to drop. So once we had the tractor trailer unloaded, we had to start transferring stuff to a smaller trailer to get it up to the property. Our property was about a quarter mile down the road and then about 200 yards to the side. Say hey! This one here, that one there, and the logs on the top. And it's starting to snow. We are on our second to last load. Thank God, what a mess. That's what's left. Because we had to offload the tractor trailer and then reload it, everything onto a flatbed to get it up to the property, this really took a long time. Totally, it probably took six and a half to seven hours and didn't want to stop for lunch until after we were done. Look at the snow coming down, yuck. So the second load was due to come in about a week and a half and I knew I wouldn't be able to really move these out of the way. So I really had to pack and stack neatly so I could get to them. So the second load of logs arrived about two weeks later. We had a lot better weather for this one and I had a beefier forklift. Still had a learning curve but went a lot smoother this time. We knew exactly what to expect, and it took another 10 trips or so to get everything up to the property. By this time, I was running out of places to put logs. Holly! Where's Puka? Puka in there? There she is! Last load, got here at 8.15 a.m. and we've been working since. finally got all the stacks put away where I wanted it. I was able to stack all the short logs in the same area, all the long logs in the same area, and then all the dimensional lumber in the same group. So one issue we had is all the paperwork, all the glues, 
all the small hardware was on the first truck and it was in the bin underneath the bed and the driver didn't know that. So all those items arrived on the second truck. Also the pick list from the lumberyard that cut the logs that explained what stack was what. Once I had all the logs and all the paperwork, then I realized that the delivery did not include the 2x8s required to finish the basement stud balls. But at least I had all the information so I could get started. Stay tuned for episode 3. Thank you for watching.